In the previous video I wired and programmed the CNC spindle inverter drive but in between that and this one I made some amendments after realizing the analog current signal generator I had bought was rather choppy. And I've now just wired the uh, 0 to 20 milliamp and 0 to 0 ground to the ACI and analog ground on the VFD. So I should be able to turn this on now and just program the VFD I've changed option 6, 0-06 to free, uh, which is to use the alternative frequency input from the ACI uh, terminal. But the only problem I have is when I flick the selector switch, you can see the frequency is oscillating. This also feels like an overcomplicated way to do something that should be quite simple. Instead, I wired a manual selector switch, which allowed me to control the spindle RPM with an analog voltage from the duet or via a potentiometer without having to program the behavior into the VFD. This is what the new wiring diagram looks like, which you can pause the video and have a look at. The front of the control box looks a little different now as well. Now the two-stage latching selector switch, instead of toggling between two inputs on the frequency drive, physically sends a signal either from the duet controller or the adjacent potentiometer to a single speed select input on the VFD. If the potentiometer signal is selected, a yellow pilot light illuminates to remind me of the current input state. I also added a safety key switch for the op laser engraver module, which I'm planning to commission at a later date. That has a red pilot light to remind me it's dangerous. I also tinkered about with a few things starting with mounting the 3D printable tangential knife. This is secured onto a 3D printed plate that is attached to the side of the spindle mounting brackets. The tang knife is on the same Z axis as the spindle, so I'll have to manually remove any router cutting bits from the spindle when going between the two tools. That said, I still haven't got this working. I'm still hoping that either Vectrix introduce some sort of tang knife setting into their software or someone develops the kinematics for this kind of movements for the duet. I also increased the height of the mounting adapter for the extraction hood. At the moment I'm using this hose that came with the extractor from Axminster but I want to swap this out for a clear and more flexible one at some point. Additionally, I also designed a spindle fan mount, which I did in Fusion 360 to use a 92mm fan to cool the router spindle. And it will be wired so that whenever the VFD turns on, the fan turns on as well. This works by pushing air through the spindle from the top to keep it cool, especially at lower RPMs. I initially wired this to operate using the VFD onboard relay circuit, but later changed it so it would turn on and off via a signal from the duet. Now I've wired the cable up through here and via a relay module, via this relay module here, 24 volt goes into the normally open terminal and then the common goes up to the fan and then the ground comes back over here. I don't think the current firmware has a spindle status object module to say whether it's on or off. So I'm relying on this command to be inserted into start.g and stop.g files within the system files. This is the wiring for that as well. While I'm sorting out the Z-axis, I also made and installed the mounting plates for the OPT lasers with an S PLH3D 6 watt head, as well as a flexible lubrication nozzle. I'm not sure what I'll be lasering, but I'm planning to only use the nozzle for cold air feeds, which is particularly useful when router cutting acrylic. Instead of 3D printing this plate, I decided to use the CNC machine itself to cut one out and again demonstrate the workflow I've been able to design around the Duet controller. There's a lot of stages, but they are relatively simple to execute and edit if needs be. I'm now able to use the panel dual touchscreen to do most of my workflow stages, including moving to a stationary probe location and to perform a probe cycle, 
which sets the tool tip to zero along the z-axis which happens to be on the wasteboard. Not sure why it says print there, well it says print because this was primarily a 3D printing platform, but it's clearly functioning for CNC too. There are two parts to the cutting job, the first for making countersunk shapes using a V-bit for the mounting machine screws, which I had to do twice to get the right depth. This is followed by profile cuts, which include making a recess for a raised block to increase the height of the lubrication nozzle mixing mounting section. It'll look a bit cluttered on the z-axis and I'll lose some wasteboard capacity when going between the different tools but I also want to try set this up on the controller as its own boring challenge. I had been sent the original laser head back in 2017 and only used it a handful of times including to decorate some pencils on a much older CNC machine. The company have offered to send me a newer version to review and amazingly that will be backwards compatible with the docking adapter that I've been mounting to the plate I'm currently cutting out. I'm now cutting out part 2 of the plate g-code file. I'm using a two flute straight cutting tool which leaves a lot of dust within the cut so my extraction doesn't look particularly good. Well it's not as good as Marius Hornberger's one but who knows maybe one day I'll have time to improve that too. That said, it seems to be getting most of the dust that is in the air, and any extraction is better than no extraction. There's not much more for me to say now, so I'll leave you with the assembly process. The air nozzle is the blue creaky thing, in case you weren't sure. In the next video I'll talk about the wiring and setting up of the laser engraver module and how I set up the tool offsets between the laser, spindle and tangential knife. Actually there is something else to add, if you'd like to support the channel and content like this please consider either becoming a patron or better still buying my CNC manual for the Moot1 desktop CNC machine, the links to which will be in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching and you'll catch me in the next one.